God in Three Persons title of this morning's message. And number one is that He is God. And He is power. He is all. He is everything. Two, that He is Christ Jesus. He is personal. He's more than just a higher power. He's personal. And that He is the Holy Spirit. He is our counselor. God's presence within us. And those are the things that I want us to look at this morning. But first, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that when we look to your word, when we are communing with you, that when we are completely open to your leading, you give us the information that we need for our lives. So I pray, Lord, just now, Father, right here, right now, especially for myself, yes. that as you speak to us, Lord, that we are able to understand that it is you that is speaking to us. And I pray, Lord, that you not only help us to understand and comprehend, but as always, Lord, I pray that you give us the courage to be honest with ourselves. To be completely open and honest, recognizing, Lord, that what you will teach us today is for us and that we must be obedient by applying it to our lives. Help us, Father. We need you. You're our loving creator. We need you. Speak to me, Lord. Use me. Use me. Speak through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God in three persons. God, Christ, the Holy Spirit. Undivided and co-equal in power and in glory. Co-equal persons of God. And as I mentioned, it's a lot to wrap our heads around. And I don't, I know for me, I won't completely comprehend, so there's a lot of faith that goes into my belief system, you know? That which I know is, I'm sure there's, I know there is, plenty of theologians and, and you know, people that have studied God's Word for years that know a whole lot more. They're able to translate it from the original Greek and the original Hebrew, and they know exactly what the words are. But in faith, I believe that when I open God's Word, that He will speak to me what it means for me in my life. And I pray that for you as well. <coughs> I don't claim to be. Again, this is Jesus 101 here. Co-equal persons. God in three persons. I don't limit God. <laughs> yeah. He's uncomparable to anything that we know here on earth. So it says here in Isaiah 46, 5, to whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? So if I stand up here and I try to explain that, well, you know, there's three forms of water, right? There's frozen, there's liquid, and there's gas to help you understand how three things can be one. It seems kind of simple. But we cannot completely wrap our heads around it. But I know in my life, through my experience, the three to be true. That how I, by surrendering my life and accepting Christ into my heart, became somebody different. And how that by doing that, my mind started to clear. And I was able to see things for what they were. And make changes. And that's what I think God would have for us. So first we're going to look at He is God. To whom shall we compare? No one. He's the creator of all things. In Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 24, I am a God who is only in one place. Am I a God who is only in one place? Ask the Lord. Do they think I cannot see what they are doing? Can anyone hide from me? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth? Ask the Lord. If we look at that verse alone, we should be able to see that it's not something that we can understand. 
Now, man might try to emulate certain things. If you look at technology today, it certainly seems like, seems like with all the satellites roaming around and the way they're, I got a phone call the other day from the Subaru dealer telling me that the car called them and told them it was time for an oil change. <laughs> I, I kid you not. I'm like, what? All seeing, all knowing, all doing. <laughs> but I don't think God needs a GPS system or computer system to tell us, tell him where we are and what we're doing and how we're doing. He is God. He is God. <clears throat> now, let me go back again, just so you know. See, I'm the present. That means he's everywhere in all of creation all the time. So since I put these words up here, omnificent, right? Omniscient. That's power over all creation. In Psalm 147, verse 5, How great is our Lord! His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. Hebrews 3, or Hebrews 4, uh, 13. Nothing in all creation can hide from him. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. This is the God whom we must explain all that we have done. Why would we have to explain? He already knows it. But just like prayer, he likes to hear it. <coughs> I think that's just the way it works. We communicate. Um, that's okay. Authority is next. He is almighty. Holy, holy, Lord to God almighty, right? Omnipotent. Trust in the Lord always. For the Lord God is the eternal rock. Matthew 29, or 19, 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible to do anything, really. We might be able to do some things on our own, but to get them right, to do things within God's will, everything is possible. It says, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. Everything. His power is more than our understanding. But it's okay. It's okay. He is God. He is the creator. We are the creation. And only God fully knows God. 1 John, or John 1, 14. <coughs> Where am I at here? So the word became human and lived here on earth among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. God did this. Colossians 2, 9. For in Christ the fullness of God lives in a human body. He is a person. He is a person. He is Christ Jesus. He is personal. He's more than just a higher power. We have an opportunity to come into a personal relationship with God our Creator through Christ Jesus. God in three persons. God, one. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. So we're looking at Jesus. We're looking at Christ. He's not a thing. He's a person. How often do I hear, and it's, I haven't heard it in a while because it was always a head scratcher when somebody would say, 
The doorknob can be your higher power as long as it's keeping you from using. That's the craziest thing ever. The doorknob doesn't love me. The doorknob is not going to give me that which I need. The doorknob is not going to show me unconditional love. It doesn't have wisdom. It doesn't have help. It doesn't have direction. It's personal. A personal relationship. That's why we call, we have names for God such as Abba. Mm -hmm. Abba is the living, loving Father. Loving, caring Father. And it's important because he calls us into a personal relationship with him. A close, intimate relationship with him. I think, and again, I'm no theologian, but I think that has a lot to do with Christ coming and living among us so that we might be able to see and read and know in our hearts how we are to act and live and love and interact. Our nature changes and we know instinctively certain things that we didn't know before. But we're able to look in the Word of God and learn about the Word, which is also another title for Christ Jesus. The Word became flesh and lived among us. So we not only are able to read about His life, but by coming into and knowing His truth that He is our Savior, we know in our hearts that it is true. God's secret plan has now been revealed to us. It is a plan centered on Christ, designed long ago according to His good pleasure. And this is his plan, that at the right time he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and earth. Furthermore, because of Christ, we have received an inheritance from God for all who he chose us from the beginning. And all things happened just as he decided long ago. God's purpose for, all, for was that we, who were f the first to trust in Christ, should praise God our glorious God. It's His plan for His creation. And it is a fair and righteous plan. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Now out of the things that people question about, and I think uh, even within churches today, the Holy Spirit might be seen, and manifestation of the Holy Spirit might be seen differently. I see and I believe that when I came into a relationship with God, I received, as promised by my Savior, Jesus Christ, the Counselor that guides us. I received an Advocate that speaks for me when I, when I stumble. It says here, in John 14, 26. I don't have it written in my notes, so I'm going to read it from up here. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. That portion of Scripture seems pretty clear. The advocate that is God's representative, or as a whole, that is the Holy Spirit. And look at the end of that sentence there. He, it doesn't say it, it says He will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. 
So everything that we know in God already before even coming into this relationship, plus everything else that we need to know will be made known to us at the right time by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to stay in His Word. You want to stay in the written Word. But we also then have God's Word on our hearts. Why did God do all this for us? Why did God make all of this possible for us? He loves us. He loves us. He is a God of love. He created us in a special way to know His love. To know in our hearts that He is real and that He is true. We are in a maintained relationship with Him. Personal, close relationship with God in Christ. We have guidance that we receive from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and those that don't are, and I've been there, and I know what it's like to be lost at sea without a rudder. God wants us to have that brother. He wants us to have the guidance that we need. <clears throat> 1 John 2.20 says, But you are not like that. You are not out there without a rudder. You're not just doing whatever you please all your life. When we've come into a relationship with God, something changes. You are not like that. For the Holy One has given you His Spirit, and all of you know the truth. We know in our hearts, thank you, Lord. We know instinctively, let's say, okay? Let's use that word. Sometimes we look at it as a conscience. We have a conscience. All of a sudden, we, we, we think and we care. Something changes. Verse 26. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit and He lives within you so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. Now it's good to have people in our lives to, to help and build us up and to look to and we bounce things off each other and God puts people in our lives. But we need to make sure that all that we learn, that all that we do are right in His eyes. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as, <coughs> just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. And it comes down to again, why did God do all this? Because He loves us. He made this possible because of His love for us. Alright, let me see. Where am I? Dear friends, in 1 John chapter 4, starting at 7, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God in three persons makes it possible for us to draw close to Him, to know His love, so that we might then share His love with others. And again, not to get political, but there's a void. There's far too many people, not just in this country, but in this world, that are void of love, of God's love. And because they've separated themselves from God, they make decisions that aren't based on God's love. They're based on human condition and human wants, human desires, human thoughts, human ideas. 
and they're separated from God. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son unto, into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. It is not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love has been brought to full expression through us. That by coming into a relationship with the creator of all things, who is love, through his son, Christ Jesus, we then know in our hearts what true love is as guided by the Holy Spirit. And God has given us the Holy Spirit as proof that we live in Him and He in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. All who proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in Him. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. More grows? Grows. As our relationship grows. As we are guided by His Word. And through His Holy Spirit, we grow. Such love has no fear. I'm reading on verse 18. Or did I skip 17? And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we are like Christ here in the world. Because we are doing God's will for our lives by, on a daily basis, trying our best to be like Christ. Again, God's will for us is to be like Christ the best we can because we will never be able to mirror God, God's image in Christ Jesus while we are breathing because we're not Jesus. But God's will for us is to be like Jesus the best we can on a daily basis. It's important for us to know that. God gave us His Word. God gave us the living Word. God gives us His Word in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. God in three persons. Three. In three persons. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is not for fear of judgment. For this shows that His love has been perfected in us. We love each other as a result of His loving us first. He loves us. Mm -hmm. So we, in all that we do, might be able to experience that love. Again, we know in our hearts because of what has taken place through the Son, Christ Jesus, that He, the Creator of all things, manifests Himself in three ways so that we might be in a loving relationship with Him. Okay? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this truth. I thank you, Father, as we try to wrap our heads around you in three persons, but one God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you come and give us peace, comfort us, Lord, uh, because we can get stuck in that. 
Help us. Help us, Lord, to trust in You. Help us, Father, to believe in You. And help us, Father, to accept with joy that which You have given, that You, the Creator of all things, Your ways are above the ways of men. Your plans are beyond that which we might be able to comprehend. But Lord, give us the faith we need to trust, to believe, and to accept that you manifest yourself in this way so that we might receive all that we need. We are able to see the living word as recorded. We're able to read about how you as Jesus acted and interacted and behaved how you taught and how you healed and how you had compassion and love for, for your fellow man. And I thank you, Lord, for that. And I pray, Father, that we recognize, Lord, that your Son also, you are a manifestation of yourself, was tortured. You not only humbled yourself to live among us, you were tortured and beaten and dragged through the streets and nailed to a cross to die for our sins. The ultimate sacrifice so that we might be forgiven of our sins and die of our old self and be reborn to become new. And I thank you, Lord, for that. And I pray, Father, that each, each person here recognizes this as truth. Lord, that they might, as you give them the faith, Lord, as you speak to their hearts now, Father, as you give them this information, Lord, I pray that you give them the courage to accept it as truth and accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior recognizing their, their sin, their past for what it is, and repenting of that. Never wanting to return, Lord, I pray, that they are able to lay all of that at your feet and accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior. I thank you, Father, because I know, I know that this is truth, that this is real, and that a change truly comes. We experience your love through the sacrifice that you made for us so that we might experience that love and share it with a sick world. And I thank you, Lord, that we also know that this is a growth process. That we grow as we draw closer and closer to you, as we seek you with our with our hearts and our minds, and we draw closer and closer to you. Our love grows. Our the knowledge of, of of your will for our lives also grows. And this comes through the Holy Spirit, who guides us. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for that, because there will be things that you will make known through your Holy Spirit that we need to change in order to grow. So I pray, Lord, as we think about those things that you are speaking to us now, Father, that we're able to lay them at your feet as well, that we hand them over to you and we make a decision this day that we will change, that we will stop doing the things that you are convicting us of, we will start doing the things that you are pointing us in the direction to follow, we will do these things because of your love for us. Because of your great love for us, we want to show our, our gratitude by being obedient to your leading. So I pray, Father, that we are able to do that just now, and we make a decision this day to do that which you are guiding us towards or away from so that we might draw closer and closer to you, our loving Creator. 
Again, Father, I thank you for this message that you've given us this day, Lord. And as you have directed us in your word, Lord, uh, that we bring all of these things to you in prayer. In the name of your Son, Christ Jesus.